Well, boys, I think I'm about to get screwed. You see, last week I bought two vehicles at the auction. One of them was a 2015 Dodge Journey RT loaded to the hill. We have what's called a post-sale inspection done on these vehicles when we buy them. It cost me a hundred bucks, but it's reassurance that a vehicle that may not be under warranty anymore gets checked out by somebody with some skill to say, this is wrong or this is wrong or this is something you need to look out for. We got the report back on the journey. It was fine. I can't say the same for this 2016 Kia Sorento. You see, I had the post-sale inspection done on this one as well, another $100. It went through the post-sale inspection, and according to the report that I have, it passed. And a couple of the things that they made note of was that the rear brakes sounded like they were grinding. Okay, well, that's something we can fix usually. Not a big deal. Another thing was that the engine light was on, which I knew that because when I bought the vehicle, I read the conditional, um, the condition report, and the condition report said that the engine light was on. Did I know what it was on for? No. But again, it's one of those things you take a chance on. So, they put their computer on it, they told me what the codes were. Again, I wasn't, I wasn't worried. It was an O2 sensor and one other little thing. Nothing to worry about. Again, we can fix that. One thing that I was concerned about was on these Kia Sorentos and the Hyundai Santa Fe's, they have a pending issue, as far as I'm concerned, with what's called the viscous coupler. And that is what engages your rear differential to engage four-wheel drive. On the little box, which I'm gonna flash up here on the screen, they had checked off four-wheel drive that it was working. Now, I'm not sure how they're checking it, but we know that when we bring these things back home from Moncton, which is about a two and a half hour drive from where we are, about 150 miles, that this is the first thing we check. So what did we do with this? We checked it. The first thing was, was we took it out to the back field here and we tried to make the rear wheel spin. Couldn't do it. So then we said, well, we gotta get it inside and find out what's going on with those rear brakes. And it sounded to me like it was a wheel bearing anyway. So we get up in the air and we found three things. Two of those three things were both rear wheel bearings are what we call in this business falling right out. Simply meaning you can grab a hold of the rear wheel and you can make it clunk. That's how bad the rear wheel bearings were. So I sent a driver to Moncton to pick this up and he drove it 150 miles unaware that the rear wheel bearings were as bad as they were. Under the impression that the post sale inspection should have revealed that. And we take for granted that if there's anything majorly wrong with a vehicle that they'll tell us that it shouldn't be driven. It's happened before. And in some cases, we've actually canceled the sale. So what I'm getting at with this thing here is we pay money to have the vehicles checked out mechanically or to some degree anyways. We understand that it's not a full on, full blown inspection for a hundred bucks, but we should know that that four wheel drive is working the way it should be. On this one, it is not, which means if arbitration doesn't come together on it, it's going to cost me over a thousand dollars, somewhere between a thousand and then fifteen hundred bucks, I think, to, is what they will run for these things, to get that fixed. Now let's back up a bit. When you pay that ninety-nine dollars to have these vehicles gone over, it does a couple of things for you. Normally on auction day, the arbitration deadline is end of day that day. But when you pay the ninety-nine dollars for the post-sale inspection, it's supposed to extend your arbitration by five business days. So the sale was on Thursday. The post-sale inspection wasn't done till Friday morning, and we brought it back Friday. So that gives us, in Canada, that gave us five extra days to get this thing going. So what did that do for me? Well, that allowed me to call yesterday, Wednesday, to set the arbitration deadline up on this vehicle. And of course, what are they doing? Well, they're arguing with me a little bit. They're saying, well, we checked it over and it says it was working. Well, I assure you, I'm not going through all this headache just for my own gain. I'm going through this headache because there's an actual issue and we want it fixed. We need to be able to sell this vehicle. 
So at the end of the day, what we're gonna be doing is they want us to take this thing clear back to Moncton, 150 miles at my expense. And I think that's wrong when there's perfectly capable transmission shops or third parties right here in town that can look after this for you. So, although I'm confident that one of two things will happen, that either it will get fixed or I will cancel the sale, let me know down in the comment section below, what would you guys do? How would you feel if, you know, you spent, you know, almost $20,000 on a vehicle at the auction just to get it back and it needs, you know, a thousand or more dollars in repairs? Um, we buy these things, we want to make sure that they're ready to go for our customers, and especially a 2016. Uh, it is just over warranty, it's got 121,000 kilometers on it, which the warranty ends at 100,000. And it's just not right that uh, we have to jump through all these hoops to get something looked after that, in my opinion, the seller probably knew was wrong. But I'm not pointing fingers at the seller at this point, I'm pointing fingers at the auction because they're supposed to be looking after us. Anyways. The point of this video is not so much to vent as it is to let you guys know that when used car and new car dealers buy vehicles at the auction, there is a certain amount of risk that we take. And sometimes that risk involves canceling the sale and having to return the vehicle at our expense. So it costs me money to send a driver after this plus the fuel to get it. If I have to send it back, I'm not gonna send this back uh, driven because those rear wheel bearings are bad and I'm not putting another dime into this vehicle. So it will have to be trailered or towed. Again, at my expense. And this is something that I'll have to eat. So when the time comes to, you know, go and sell another vehicle, for instance, this 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan or anything else in the lot, the cost of that expense needs to be absorbed. And unfortunately, that's just business. Uh, no different than having to pay a power bill or a water bill or whatever you're paying bills on for your business. Those costs are absorbed. That's why we have to have profit. We know what minimum profit we have to have when we sell a vehicle. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you're trying to beat us up on the price, uh, there's just so much, there's only so much that we can do. So please just understand. I'm not saying that you're not going to get a deal next time you come in. All I'm saying is, is that you just need to understand sometimes where these used car dealers are coming from when they don't want to negotiate or when they can't negotiate on a specific vehicle or whatever. So anyways, having said all of that, this is just an informational video. You guys all know that I have this used car dealership and this is my main gig and this YouTube is just something that we do for fun. Uh, and this is kind of how the whole channel got started was talking about the used car business and how things happen and the ins and outs. Well now you know and uh, so having said that uh you know i just i hope that now you understand sometimes some of the things that go on uh, behind the scenes that nobody ever actually sees so uh i thought i'd share that with you uh, i'll give you an update in a later video on how the whole arbitration process ended up whether we got it or we didn't whether we canceled the sale whether we're gonna have to fix the car or whatever anyways it's time to close out this video so i will be right back so folks, don't forget we are down to the final few episodes of the Car Guy and Six Fan Show with Grant, who is straight six fan. He's my co-host, uh, and we we are looking for a very special guest. I think that we have secured one for the season finale. I hope you guys can tune in on Thursday evenings at seven o'clock central, eight eastern, and nine local time for the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. Just a couple of car guys talking cars with other car guys. Having said all that, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. You see, last week I bought two vehicles at the auction. One of them was a 2015 Dodge Journey RT. That means it's time to go to work. Gotta love those factory bells. But what I was concerned... <coughs> concerned? No, I'm not concerned, Jason. You were concerned. That's what I was concerned about.